Good afternoon, this is your tropical weather update from 28storms.com on this Wednesday, August 17th. We have two significant threats in the Atlantic Basin, but let's go ahead and knock out the Eastern Pacific really quickly. We told you guys a few days ago about how there would be an increase in activity across the, much of the Pacific, and we have Tropical Storm Fernanda way out here that is no threat to land. There's also a second disturbance the Hurricane Center is monitoring, but that's not going to develop. And here is the main threat that we were looking at the last four to five days right off the Mexican Riviera. This is now Tropical Storm Greg. Greg has maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. It's moving off toward the west-northwest at 21 miles per hour and it should become a minimal hurricane within the next 24 to 48 hours but the good news is that it is moving away from the Mexican coastline. There is a powerful mid-level ridge across much of Mexico and that is why the models are all in agreement that this will continue moving west-northwest out to sea. Here is the Mexican coastline and the latest infrared is indicating that the convection is on the decline to some extent over the last three hours. However, if we look at the latest visible imagery, we see that there is an increase in organization, so the storm still appears to be getting its act together, and it should have no trouble becoming a minimal hurricane, especially as it continues moving off toward the west-northwest and away from this dry air over much of Mexico. And to the east of Greg, we really don't see any organized activity to the south of Mexico, so we're looking fairly good out there in the eastern Pacific this afternoon. Now in the Atlantic Basin, we have two main systems to watch. One is 93L Invest. This is the same invest that we've been tracking for at least a week now. It's located just to the southeast of Jamaica. And the latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center says that cloudiness and showers associated with a tropical wave over the West Central Caribbean Sea have become a little better organized this morning. However, there is no evidence of a surface circulation and pressures have not fallen much over this region. Environmental conditions remain conducive for gradual development during the next couple of days. An Air Force Reserve Unit aircraft is currently en route to investigate this disturbance. The system has a medium chance, 40%, of becoming a tropical cyclone during the next 48 hours as it moves generally westward at 15 to 20 miles per hour. So the chances have increased between 20 and 40% over the past 24 hours. Now the second system in mind has not been outlined on this map just yet, but I'm sure the Hurricane Center will do so within the next day. It's the tropical wave located here moving into the central Atlantic now, and this has a good chance of threatening the eastern Caribbean and possibly even the southeast United States down the road. But of course the main threat to land within the next 72 to 96 hours is Invest 93L currently located to the southeast of Jamaica and it certainly has the overall look of a system that will be making an attempt at becoming a weak tropical cyclone right before landfall. We definitely have some low to mid-level turning of the clouds. There's really no evidence of anything at the surface just yet and we need just a little bit more convection for this mid-level circulation to possibly work its way down to the surface before we can consider this to be our next tropical depression. But the overall conditions do appear to be slightly or marginally favorable for steady intensification as it moves off toward the west-northwest in the general direction of the northern coast of Honduras and much of Belize. As we look at the latest water vapor imagery, there is some dry air that's going to be trying to work into the system from the south. Although it looks like the moisture environment is favorable enough, combined with some plentiful sea surface temperature is in excess of 29 to 30 degrees Celsius so this should be able to develop I would think just before it makes landfall. The ASCAT satellite pass taken during the late morning hours also proved that there was no low level circulation at the time as we can see by the wind factors we have nothing but easterly flow throughout this tropical wave so nothing there quite yet. Now if we look at the steering we see that there is a strong mid-level to low-level ridge over much of the Gulf of Mexico and that's going to guarantee that this will be no threat to the United States and it should remain on a general slightly north of due west heading and that should take it along the northern half of the Honduras coast and into extreme southern Belize and don't pay much attention to this little west-southwest flow here because the steering layer is beginning to pick up on the tropical wave axis itself so that's really not the true background flow. Now despite me saying that, the latest tropical model plots have come in more toward the south and many of them are now showing a landfall across the northern half of Nicaragua along with much of Honduras, although I still think that these more southerly tracks are a bit sketchy and in fact the latest 12Z dynamical run from the European model still indicated that this will pass along the extreme northern coast of Honduras 
And that could act to weaken it to some extent if that low-level center gets too close, but I still think it's going to end up making it into the Gulf of Honduras here, and then eventually working its way into the southern coast of Belize. Now, if we begin to discuss the medium and extended range, a much more significant player could be this tropical wave now beginning to pass through 35 degrees west longitude. We see that there is a well-defined low to mid-level circulation, although if we look at the latest infrared imagery, we see that there's really not that much convection, especially directly over that low to mid-level center. All the strongest thunderstorm activity is still mainly confined down to the south near the intertropical convergence zone, and that is because we still have a lot of dry air working its way in from the north, and it's even coming in from the west and beginning to wrap itself into this low-level center. But as the system begins to move into warmer sea surface temperatures, as we turn them on here, we see that we go from 26 to 27 degrees Celsius into 29 and even 30 degrees Celsius territory as we get closer to the Central Atlantic Ocean. So that should allow the system to begin developing much of its own convection, and that will help it to fight off some of this dry air. And in terms, of, in terms of the upper level wind shear, it looks like we are looking at a fairly good environment for intensification. There's really not that much troughiness in the central Atlantic. And we can see the western extent of a mid to upper level favorable ridge working its way in here. And it's going to follow this tropical wave as it moves off toward the west. Now the only concern regarding shear could be this upper level low. If this were to remain in place and eventually as the system came in from the, from the east, it would be sheared to pieces but many of the dynamical models have that upper level low lifting toward the north and becoming a non-factor. This is the latest moisture profile animation for much of the Atlantic and we can see 93L invest developing a nice cyclonic rotation as it begins to work its way into the central and western Caribbean but even more notably is the tropical wave that we're talking about in the central Atlantic and whenever you see such a high amplitude tropical wave like this with favorable conditions out ahead, you know that that is usually a player for a significant development. The vorticity analysis shows that the system is gradually becoming steadily more organized. And once again, on the latest wind shear analysis, here is the presence of that favorable mid to upper level ridge. This is the strong shear zone that we mentioned to the south of that upper level low. And you can see the upper level low is being presented fairly well here on the Sims wind shear analysis. But again, this upper level low should lift toward the north. We're going to look at the dynamical models now, starting off with the 12Z European run. And the first thing I want you to look at over the first 72 hours is 93L invest, because frankly, the tropical wave is not expected to really show that much in the way of strengthening over the first couple of days, whereas this system could be the first and primary threat to land here. So here's our vorticity max located to the southeast of Jamaica, which is correct based on what we're seeing on satellite. And as we go into 24 and 48 hours, we definitely see some int intensification, more than likely into a tropical depression or tropical storm. And here we are during the early morning hours of Friday with that low pressure center located just to the northeast tip of Honduras. And notice between day two and day three, the low pressure center begins to make its way just enough toward the north to avoid much of the Honduras mainland. And then by 96 hours, it's already moving inland across the extreme lower half of the Yucatan Peninsula. So we're not expecting any way of rapid intensification. And if this were to form into a weak tropical cyclone, the primary threat would be heavy rainfall for a one to two day span. Now, as we get into day four, or early Sunday morning, we see that we have a developing tropical depression or tropical storm here to the east of the Virgin Islands. And by day five, we now have a legit tropical storm passing directly over Puerto Rico, if the European model is correct. And so far, we have a fairly good model consensus for the first five days of the forecast. So the storm should certainly be either directly over the Northeast Caribbean or very close. And the forecast becomes problematic primarily once we get into the day six range. And we can see that the very most recent run of the European is now taking this directly over Hispaniola. And much like with Tropical Storm Emily, Hispaniola can be a major wrench in the forecast as the island could really disrupt the intensity of the storm. And as we've learned in the past, if you don't get the intensity right, you're not going to get the track forecast right. And this model significantly weakens the system into a tropical wave after it passes over the high terrain. And that is a distinct possibility. I'm not saying it's likely, but that is just one thing that we're going to have to consider. One thing that we can also take a look at is the 500 millibar steering pattern forecast. And we're starting off with day five, so our tropical system should be located right around Puerto Rico at this time. And notice that we do have a long wave trough over much of the New England states, but the Atlantic Subtropical Ridge, 
along with the Central Plains Ridge, are trying to connect here over the southwest Atlantic near the Bahamas. Now, by day six, though, that trough does amplify, and if our system were a bit faster and located a bit more toward the north over the western Atlantic, then that trough probably would recurve it. But notice that by day seven, we see that the trough is lifting out, and if our system is still located somewhere near the Bahamas, then that would imply a much more west or west-northwest track, which could place more of the southeast United States under at least some type of risk of a landfall. Switching gears to the 12Z Canadian CMC, you'll first notice that it does not develop 93L in the Caribbean, although I am fairly skeptical of that idea. And if we turn our focus more toward the Central Atlantic Wave, we see that it doesn't show much development in the first few days, but definitely once it begins to near the Northeast Caribbean and Hispaniola is when we see development into a tropical cyclone. The 12Z GFS is very similar to the CMC in that it shows no Caribbean development, and it also holds off on the Central Atlantic Wave developing until it reaches the Northeast Caribbean, and it is a bit faster. And then as we get into Day 7, we see that the GFS is taking the storm into the Southeast Bahamas, and also we have a third th tropical system exiting the coast of Africa, but that's really far out and would not be a threat for a very long time. And this is not the only model or model run that has been showing this, so we very well could have another Cape Verde system by the end of next week. I figured I would also throw in the upper level forecast from the GFS to, just to show what the models are doing with that upper level low located to the northeast of Puerto Rico. There it is, and as we can see, the model does steadily take this more toward the north along with the shear axis, and here is the makings of our tropical system a lot more toward the south so it shouldn't be directly impacted by that upper level feature and also this is the GFS shear forecast once again our tropical system is still embedded within the western extent of that eastern Atlantic upper level ridge which is a favorable pattern and look at what the GFS does it steadily takes that upper level ridge to the west with it so this is a favorable pattern all the way throughout the forecast period especially as we get into day five and day six where we see a lot of upper level ridging over the Northeast Caribbean. And finally, the last thing I would like to show in terms of 12Z model guidance is the Day 5 UK Met model forecast. Now, we usually don't show the UK Met because it's not quite as accurate as the GFS, European, and some of the other models, but it is typically by far one of the more conservative dynamical models in showing development. And yet, despite that, we still have a fairly healthy tropical cyclone signature here, once again by day five between Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic with a 1,006 millibar low pressure center. And that is a fairly good signature, especially for a UK Met run. So we have overwhelming model support that we should at least have a tropical storm in the Northeast Caribbean by the five to six day range. And this very well could be a hurricane threat to the Western Atlantic and possibly the Eastern seaboard. And again, that greatly depends on what this will do in and around Hispaniola. So just to recap, we do have a couple tropical systems in the eastern Pacific, but none of them pose a threat to land. In the Caribbean, I do think 93 Elk Invest will make a run at becoming a weak tropical depression or possibly even tropical storm as it begins to interact with Honduras and the lower half of Belize within the next couple of days. And then in the medium and extended range, we will more than likely have a tropical storm in or very close to the Northeast Caribbean, and depending on the pattern and what it decides to do near Hispaniola, it could become more of an extended range threat to the Southeast United States. But once again, that is a fairly extended forecast, so we really can't get much more specific than that at this current time. So just stick with 28storms.com, and we will try to provide you with the most extensive analysis as we possibly can as we continue to approach the climatological peak of the 2011 Atlantic hurricane season.